Hello and welcome to Foreign Policy Focus, episode 32. I am the show's host, Kyle, and the first thing I want to talk about today is the U.S. media and how they are pretty much at this point only profiteers of of war and uh, just lying, you know, being government mouthpieces lying us into war. Looking at the media commentary, uh, I I decided I I should tune back in and and just listen to a couple of shows uh, uh, not not to get any, any information, but to know what people like Charles Krauthammer, Rachel Maddow, and Wolf Blitz are saying. Because they talk to such a wide audience, it's important to know either if they're telling the truth or what lies they're telling. That way you know how to kind of combat and disprove the, those lies. I think by far the worst thing the media does is it glorifies war. Uh, I... In no other subject but war could people be so wrong about things and still get to appear on TV shows. Uh, Think about people like Donald Rumsfeld or uh, Dick Cheney, whose opinion to the mainstream media is still very important and matters and they want to tell you what they're saying, or Bill O'Reilly or Sean Handy. All these people who were so wrong about America's foreign policy post-war on terror, it's unbelievable. These are the people who are telling us every night that Iraq's going to be a cakewalk, that we're going to be greeted as liberators, that democracy is going to spread through the Middle East, and how it was just going to be easy, and no Americans were going to die, and, and it was going to be a glorious and beautiful war that we emerged victors because we're the best, and uh, it didn't happen. Afghanistan, we were supposed to go in and we were going to kill bin Laden and we were going to overthrow the Taliban and create a democracy in Afghanistan that's never been known before. Didn't happen. Uh, If you look at our war in Yemen, where we're supposed to be the country that's, you know, going in with aid and saving babies, but instead we're starving babies and and killing people. These are all the people that 100% wrong. They said the best was going to happen. They said not only would the people of these countries be better, better off but america would be safer it's not like they're even honest and say like yeah this policy is gonna starve a hell of a lot of you many people but uh you know we're worried about our own safety and uh we think that we have the moral right to go and starve a bunch of people to guarantee our safety but you you never get that narrative the uh the the these hosts these o'reilly's these rumsfelds these cheney's uh obama susan rice uh rachel Maddow, all of them every single one of them pretty much everybody who shows up on, on these shows are typically wrong about the war issue and uh they, they've been proven wrong you, you could go on youtube and you could find clips and just type in like o'reilly was wrong and i you could watch hours and hours of videos of o'reilly you know talking about the iraq war and saying all of these things would be a good idea and being absolutely 100% not even close to being right wrong but yet you know up until a week ago he was on tv and it was a set scandal that finally brought him down not the fact that he he lied he allowed people to come on to a show and lie to you and pretended to be a critical news analyst and, and was not and he never asked the critical and the important questions and, and leading up to the afghanistan iraq war the libya war the syria war the yemen war and so i mean i'm you know i'm glad he's finally off the air and i'm not saying that such scandal certainly isn't serious but it seems like that this man should have been laughed out of town long long ago and all these people as well i mean still pe- people still care what george w bush thinks that <laughs> I, I don't get it. And the mainstream media really plays up and they, they're the ones that have these people on and they make a big deal out of the interviews with George W. Bush or, or whatever. The, I mean, it's bad enough that they don't make an effort to really ask critical questions and underreport the news. But what they do is they glorify war. Uh, looking at what some of the you know mainstream media said after the Tomahawk missile attack on the, the Syrian Assad government, we have, you know, people saying this is Trump turning the page on the rocky beginning of his presidency. I think we have uh, somebody saying, I think Donald Trump became president of the United States uh, the night of the uh, Syria attack. Somebody said that our weapons were uh, so beautiful. I believe Brian Williams said it was a beautiful thing. Uh, just, you know, all these, like, really, like, nice and flowery things about a uh, attack that killed nine people. I, I think uh, even with stories when you have, like, executions, like what's going on in Arkansas right now, at least people are kind of uncomfortable about the fact that these people are dying. It's, you know, we have to do it, but we don't want to do it. Nobody wants to push the button. Uh, that that kills the man. Nobody wants to, 
I guess, stand up and clap when when somebody dies. You know, at least not very recently. Maybe Timothy McVeigh was somebody that people were happy when he was dead. But a lot of times, you know, it, it's kind of like an ugly thing we have to do, but we have to do it is the way that's treated. But when it comes to war, it's a beautiful thing. I, I Can you imagine... You have an an execution and they press a button and the, you you kind of see like the chemicals you know going into the, through the IV into the man's arm and then you know he closes his eyes and uh, somebody says that's a beautiful thing I, I commentator saying there a beautiful thing we would all kind of be upset and offended by that but yet yeah, this is what they do when it comes to the war issue and nobody seems to care uh i of course i th- i think there is definitely a uh a glorification of the of the soldier as well of course you know o'reilly and all the politicians and, and pretty much everybody will do this you know right left whoever will go on and they'll talk up and how say how important the troops are and how brave the troops are and how what the troops are doing are a good thing and more importantly, anytime anybody says anything against the war, so if they were to hear this show, I'm sure they would say, well, don't you care about what the troops are doing? Do you think they're dying for nothing? And uh, and they're, they kind of use this as a thing, like, if you insult the wars, you insult the, the troops, and they really tie the wars to the troops. And I'm, I'm sure this is something the American government does and likes, too. I mean, it's, it's a huge psychological weapon to use against the population by saying that you insult a bunch of people who are doing what they feel is an extremely noble thing and going in, you know, in their eyes, defending the rights of the American people and they're the protectors of the country. And ideally, this is what and and the, the purpose of an army would be, right, is to be the defenders of liberty and freedom of the people at home. Uh, you know, the if our troops were somebody who are the, the brave people who went to battle whenever somebody was trying to invade your country then yeah i mean you you know that that's one thing but whenever your troops are fighting offensive wars and they're going and occupying people i mean that you know we in if in on the world stage today we are no longer america in 1776 we are now the uk in 1776 and so while we see the American troops fighting that war as brave, heroic people, right? I know there, you know, there, you know, we could argue about should there, uh, you know, have been a more pacifist route to take, should it have been more, uh, you know, civil disobedience type protests, protests to separate ourselves from the UK. But at the end of the day, I, I certainly could not condemn the, the, the men who fought that war because, you know, self defense, they, they were defending themselves in their way of life. However, that, that's not the role we play today. We play the role of the UK troops and we're coming to America to, you know, get the dang colonists in line who are acting all like savages and causing us problems and everything like that. And I'm sure you could have used lines like the Americans are jeopardizing the U- UK's interest overseas and they're going to, uh, you know, cause large problems for us and, and hurt our economy and hurt you and, and all of this nonsense that we hear today. And so those troops don't get so much glorification and, and you don't you don't care about them quite so much because you know they're fighting an offensive war they're going to put down people who are just trying to live free and and so this is this is the world today and nobody in our media wants to or can or is smart enough to admit that that the roles have changed i think what the the, one of the biggest failures of the media is obviously they just don't ask the critical questions they don't they don't ever say to uh to dick cheney or george bush or any of the troops do you think the war you're fighting is ethical do you think it's okay to uh you know violate just war theory and go to war against a set of people for their own freedom I, I, one of the biggest things you get out of the enlightenment in the enlightenment is the just war theory and america's wars uh, the war on terror and pretty much i mean uh, definitely every action since world war one or world war two is uh you know america fighting an offensive war uh for you know morally dubious people uh certainly we're arming al-qaeda in syria that that cannot be seen as just and, and nobody will ever ask should we be fighting this war is it american is it the is it following the principles of america and anti-interventionism to go ahead and, and fight this war Our constitution would certainly say no and i think it's quite obvious but you don't see that in and, and even in more obvious cases if you're uh somebody covering the war in syria and somebody comes on your show and tells you that i know irrefutably that the 
Assad government used chemical weapons on uh, his own people. Uh, I'm talking about the attack just a couple months ago. And, uh, and you don't have a single journalist. Nobody goes up there and says, well, I know you say this, but back in, uh, you know, 2013, I believe a similar situation happened. And Obama said that, you know, Assad crossed the red line and almost got us in a war with Syria the American people didn't want to be in. So why should we believe that this time it was actually Assad and this wasn't just another Syrian rebel false flag meant to trick us into war? I, I don't think that question is, you know... Um, a dumb question to ask it certainly seems like that if you are somebody who wants to critically cover the news that that is one of the things that you should ask that hey is this the same thing as it was last time another question would have to be is that um uh, you know obviously america used the syrian government's use of chemical weapons is gonna draw fire from the american government so why would Assad use chemical weapons on his own people if he's winning the war in syria and the only thing that caused him co- to lose the war would be the u.s government getting involved and really press their you know guests to answer these questions directly because i think that well certainly the second question i don't think there's an answer to uh, other than Assad's a madman and i don't want to put it past him and say that this you know tyrannical dictator is a good guy and we should believe him but it seems like it's well within his own best interest to uh go ahead and uh not carry out a chemical weapons attack but but you you never get these questions uh whenever you talk about iran's nuclear war program or an assessment report that the cia puts out you never ask you know the questions never link back to 2002 and 2001 the lead up to the war in iraq and say hey man Back then you were saying this, this sounds an awful lot like what you're saying now. Why are you right this time? Or the CIA was wrong about Iraq in 2003 and that cost us trillions of dollars and tens of thousands of lives and million, you know, a million Iraqi or so died. So, you know, you got to make a pretty compelling case this time around that you're right because I don't quite trust you from what you did and, you know, lie to me about last time. But you never have that. Never, ever have that. And, and that's one of the things that's the most ashamed. So what I'm talking about all this is I found a little survey or a, a petition online that, you know, is uh, trying to get 100,000 signatures, 150,000 signatures or so. And I think it's going up actually quite quick here to tell the media to cut out the bull when it comes to glorifying war to, you know, report the issue accurately for a change, because I think it will make a huge difference when the people know the truth. Like what I talked about last time is Americans don't view most of the world as their enemies. And so if the media wasn't lying to him and just reporting exactly what the government said then maybe we would have a chance to uh, end some of these wars and bring the troops home so i will link to the petition on the page while you're on the page go ahead and share the show sign up for the petition and uh yeah let's let's try to you know affect some change here getting into news stories now i'll start with a few stories about mr trump and north korea Trump is uh, having, I guess, a uh, briefing in the White House for all 100 senators. So, uh, wow, I, that's going to be quite a meeting. Uh, a lot of, you know, high profile people there. I hope that aides will be allowed in the meeting. A lot of times these uh, congressmen know absolutely nothing about foreign policy. So they may need somebody there to say, hey, this is where North Korea is on the map and every, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so hopefully that happens. There's a lot of speculation as to what this meeting means. I, I honestly have no idea. And I would say unless some senators come out afterwards and say, you know, we really need to stop Trump from doing A, B, or C, then I would guess that you know, we're, we're not going to exactly know what was said in this meeting. It seems to me to be just as likely that Trump could be telling the senators, hey, the, the strategy against North Korea here is for me to sound like a real hawk and try to, you know, get them to be real scared of the U.S. and think that we're going to war with them. That way they go ahead and give up their nuclear weapons. And I just need you all to go along with this. Or it could be I'm going to go to war with North Korea. Don't get in my way or uh, we're going to have problems. So so. You know, who knows? Or he could be just saying that I have no idea what I'm doing on North Korea, so uh, don't don't take any of it too seriously. Trump did speak to uh, the UN Security Council. I believe there's like 15 states there, and said that the U.S. would like uh, more UN sanctions on North Korea. This would include sanctions against 
people selling North Korea oil and and sanctions that would allow uh, North Korean ships to be seized on on the inter, in international waters. I I really don't understand the purpose of this. Maybe they're gonna try to starve all the North Koreans to death. That way they can never nuke us. I would imagine that the people that are gonna suffer are, are not gonna be Kim Jong Un and his family and his generals. Chances, I I think that we've seen on the international stage and just what happens when you put sanctions on people like what happened in Iraq under Clinton is that people suffer and die and no change happens and it's very unlikely that the government's goal of the people rising up and overthrowing the leader just will not happen. Well on the subject of North Korea we do have uh, the THAAD missiles arriving in South Korea. These are the anti uh, nuclear or anti ballistic missile missiles that you know go to up and shoot down missiles. This was actually met by about 500 North Korean protesters. It's kind of funny that, you know, we put these weapons in their country and they don't even want them there. I guess, you know, they figured that this made them a target for uh, North Korea. Uh, I'm sure North Korea will want to blow up the, the missile defense systems. Also, you have a, a situation where the, it's just adding more fuel to the fire in the region and China certainly sees this as a threat and the North Korea, Koreans see it as a threat because if you could shoot down their, their missiles, then it, it raises a lot of questions if, uh, if that would allow them to have their first strike capabilities, in which case you you could be attacked at any time for any reason, just to wipe you off the map. So uh, that that's a lot of the concern going on there. We have news that the Supreme Court will not be hearing a case that would have uh, allowed for the release of the CIA torture report, or I think required the del- release of the CIA torture report. Uh, unfortunately, they won't hear it. This is disappointing. That report should be released. And then Cheney and the rest of them should be prosecuted for uh, committing war crimes. I read an interesting article about psychological trauma being caused uh, to drone operators from watching the drone footage. I guess you know, as a drone operator, you see a lot of war. Uh, at times, I suppose drone operators are forced to watch people getting raped or something like that uh, because they, they had to watch the war zone if there's troops in the area or what, whatever. And so I, this is, this is another impact of our foreign policy that even troops who stay at home never go overseas and just sit in some air conditioned basement somewhere. You're not immune from the terrible, you know, effects of American interventionism. I'm sure a lot of the drone operators see themselves blow up innocent people and this is just all, all an effect of the war. In other news, we have Rex Tillerson talking, uh, overseas. I believe he was in Japan for this one. And he said that the U.S. would continue to have sanctions on Russia until Crimea is uh, returned to Ukraine. Here, Here's another case where the media absolutely fails. Rather than asking Red Tillerson the critical question that the, Nor- that the Crimeans chose to be a part of Russia over being part of Ukraine after you did a coup and overthrow the, through the, you know, elected Ukrainian government and empowered a bunch of Nazis and, and nobody in the media will ever ask that because obviously that would be way too critical of a question and would really throw the U.S. foreign policy into a, a huge mess because whenever you realize that your country is the one doing the immoral things is kind of not something you want to sit there and let happen and then you you know unelect people and demand that Matt steps down and Tillerson and Trump and all of them are just a bunch of dirty liars so eh, unfortunate we have uh f-35s to train in Estonia Estonia of course borders Russia and so that can't make the Russians very happy and it's just more signs that the Trump government wants to provoke a war with Russia in Syria we have a few news stories the most important being that Turkey bombed some U.S. backed Kurdish troops. I guess they killed 18 in total. Uh, Turkey, for a long time, has been saying that they don't like that Kurds being empowered in uh, in Syria. That they really want to work with the U.S. and the U.S. to work with their uh, free Syrian army jihadist linked groups. And uh, and the U.S. chose to work with the Kurds. And I guess Erdogan is now dictator of Turkey and says, "Well, well screw it, we'll bomb them anyways." Uh, very interesting move. I think that the most 
kind of notable thing is this is one of Turkey's real foreign policy action since the referendum in the middle of the month. And it seems that this could be a possible inter, you know, indication of a more independent of NATO Turkey foreign policy to come. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Turkey to look to exit NATO. And uh, it does seem that they're withdrawing their bid from the EU. If the U.S. and the West are going to bat the Kurds, that might be enough for Erdogan to, you know, say, well, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Uh, I do think that Erdogan probably gets along well with Putin, and uh, so so there's a possibility that things can move in that direction, although I wouldn't be guaranteed that, you know, Erdogan doesn't just go to his own in Turkey or maybe allies with the Sunni powers in Israel. Uh, we have several U.S. airstrikes in Syria, killing a total of 11 civilians. Eight of those civilians were a family fe- fleeing a Syrian town that ISIS holds. Uh, a lot of times the U.S. will drop leaflets on the town saying that if you're wrong, we're going to assume you're ISIS and bomb you. And uh, that seems to be what happened here. Unfortunately, I don't think you could justify blowing up a family by saying, well, we dropped some leaflets in their neighborhood saying that if you did this, we are going to shoot you. Even though all these people are are trying to get away from ISIS. Who knows? Maybe if they stayed, ISIS was going to kill their families and they left, the U.S. was going to. So maybe a chance that that the drone rocket missed or that, you know, it blows up your car. But one of the children survivor or some... Uh, uh, unbelievably terrible decision some parent had to make somewhere to decide whether to try to save their children by staying in the town and maybe getting murdered by ISIS or driving a van across the desert and getting droned by the U.S. In other areas of Syria, we have 12 deaths caused by Russia and Turkey bombing. So, uh, you know, no side in this war is uh, hands are clean. It's messy all around. They're killing people everywhere. I'm sure these civilians faced a very similar situation uh, where they either had to stay and die at the hands of possibly U.S. bat al Nusra terrorists or uh, flee the city and then take the risk of getting bombed by Russia and Syria. And so there, there are several very bad areas to live in the world today, and a lot of those areas are places where the U.S. is bombing. And uh, Russia and Syria bombing does not help anything either. We have the Syrian government advancing to take the town of Hama. And so just looking at these past uh, three or four stories that I brought up, all should have been headline news. All should have been deeply talked about in, um, in, in the mainstream media. We should have had a lot of... All these hosts should have been asking their guests, hey, you said that back in the Kurds was going to be a new thing, and it seems to me like we bat the Kurds, and now we pit to fight with Turkey, and Turkey's the NATO ally with the Nets' largest army, Nets to America's, and it might be a bad idea to pick a fight with this NATO ally, and it generally seems like he gave us by a device, so do you have any justification for doing that, or, you know, what's, what's the situation here? But nobody yet, nobody ever asked that. And the story, I think, is a little bit downplayed in the mainstream media. I really didn't see much coverage on it, mainly, I think, because it really doesn't fit with the narrative. I think MSNBC might have had a decent story about it just because it, it looks bad on Trump. We don't see any stories about the U.S. bombing countries. We see some are bombing and killing civilians. We see some about if Russia or Syria do it because it, the U.S. mainstream media wants to make it look like Russia and Syria kill a lot of civilians and the U.S. doesn't. When it comes to the Syrian government taking Hama, ties in with my earlier questions saying that, hey guys, you know, you said that Assad used these chemical weapons, but it sure seems to me like Assad's going to win this war, so why do we use chemical weapons? We have a, a UN report saying that one child under the age of five dies every 10 minutes in, in Syria. This looks like it's going to be like a 25 minute show, so two and a half children will die in the course of the time while you're listening to this uh, show. Oh, those children are Yemen, not Syria. Uh, sorry if I made that mistake earlier. I'm sure that this number is a little uh, exaggerated, in, in, at least in its uh, impact on the war issue. I'm sure a, a large and a surprising number of children in Yemen were dying every 10 minutes prior to the Saudi and U.S. intervention in uh, Yemen. Well, I guess the U.S. intervention goes back to like 2001, but even prior to that, a lot, you know, it wasn't a great place to live, poorest country in the Middle East. But if a country is in the condition where one child is dying 
uh, under the age of five is dying every 10 minutes. Don't you think it's a bad idea to bomb there? Don't you think that those people have bigger problems than your bombs? And don't you think that there's nothing you could really do to drop bombs on these people to make them uh, understand? Because what they're worried about is their five-year-old child not starving to death. It, it, our intervention there just seems unbelievably stupid. And obviously, if you got a war somewhere, you're not going to have humanitarian aid going in there like you should. And so all these liberals who want to pretend like they care about the poor people of Yemen, Yemen but turned a blind eye to Obama bombing him for two or for all eight years of his presidency. I think one of his first drone strikes killed some people in Yemen or it might have been Pakistan. Either way, Obama killed people in Yemen for a bunch of years. And then either when uh, he wasn't killing enough people, Yemen, Yemen, Yemeni people in Yemen or uh, or just got bored with the current levels and decided that he needed to bat Saudi Arabia killing even more people in Yemen. And so we got a whole bunch of people in Yemen dying. And of course, Trump can't be underdone by Obama. So he has to kill even more people and support Saudi Arabia even more in Yemen. And all the while... Poor kids are suffering and, and dying to death. And while we shy, you know, fly our shiny new weapons over there that the media is going to ogle over and Brian Williams will call absolutely beautiful, uh, those bombs are going to kill children who pick food out of landfills. So it just, it, when, when you say it like that, you just wonder how the media lies to you so much about it. Well, that thing I want to talk about is just uh, a couple of attacks the Taliban carried out in Afghanistan. We have them attacking a U.S. base and killing four Afghanis. Uh, I guess the base was somewhere in northern Afghanistan. We also had the Taliban attacking a few checkpoints along an Afghani road in north of Taliban and killing eight Afghani troops. And I guess they now hold a chunk of this critical road that goes from one city to the other and uh, is you know, kind of the shortest path between those two points. So uh, in that sense, in rule of Afghanistan in rural Afghanistan, you really need those roads to be in the hands of the government if you want to, you know, distribute aid and help people and have commerce and all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, just more problems with our war in Syria. So that will wrap up the show for me today. I hope you all enjoyed it and my rant about the media. Man, those people really get on my nerves. I watch them for a couple days and then I got to go talk about <laughs> got go talk about them a whole bunch on my podcast. Uh, if you like the show, share the show, Facebook, wherever you got it. With all the lives of mainstream media is telling we got to share a podcast like mine and other people who uh, who put out this great content. You know, Ron Paul, Scott Horton, Dave Smith, who are really talking about the important issues in foreign policy. And we get... You you know, we got to spread the word to combat that narrative. If you want to get some good news every day, uh, it's going to require a little bit of reading, but it won't fill your head with lies like the mainstream media will. Check out my uh, daily news roundups. They appear on the libertarianinstitute.org and at my website, kylesfilesball.com. While you're there, you can sign up for my email list, and then I'll email you my news roundup every morning, and you don't even have to worry about, you know, going to the websites or anything like that, accessing RSS feeds right in your inbox. I include my podcasts the day after they appear on the bottom there so you can get all of your stuff that way uh all, of, all my content that way if you want it check out my uh, facebook group foreign policy focus i post all my shows in there we you know talk a little bit about foreign policy share important stories in there i think we're gonna have uh i'm gonna be posting in there a little bit more in the next couple weeks if you want to give me any feedback about the show that's a great place to do it if you also want to give me feedback on the show uh you can always send me an email uh kyle's files blog at gmail.com files spelled f-y-l-e-s Check out my Facebook page, Kyle's Files, and uh, follow me on Twitter at K-Y-A-A-A-L-E. And the uh, page for the show, the website for the show is foreignpolicyfocus.libsyn.com. Thanks, everybody, so much for listening. I'll be back on Friday, and I think I'm going to talk about uh, Trump's first 99 days.